The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. You are alone in Paris, unable to speak the language, unable to cope with a gigantic conspiracy which seeks to convince you that you are mad, and you know you are the victim of a plot from which there is no escape. Escape. Produced and today written by William N. Robeson and carefully contrived to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Today, we escape to Paris at the time of the Great Paris Exposition, and one of the recurring legends of the 20th century, in Alexander Wolcott's version of the story of the Vanishing Lady. Another cup of tea, Bruce? No, no, thank you, my dear. I'll just light up my pipe now and have a look at the evening standard. I'd like another, please, Mother. All right, Alice. Uh, uh, Uh-oh. Only one sugar, dear. We must watch our figures, you know. Oh, (laughs) what nonsense. A growing girl like Alice needs plenty of sugar. See, Mother, Daddy approves. Perhaps. But Mother is still boss. Yes, Mother. There's a dear. Mother. Yes, dear. I've been thinking... Yes, dear? I've been thinking about my grandparents. Oh. I know all about Daddy's parents. How Grandfather Stanley commanded a dreadnought at the Battle of Jutland. It was not a dreadnought, Alice. It was a heavy cruiser. Yes, heavy cruiser. (laughs) He got the VC and how Grandmother Stanley was a volunteer nurse at Western Arch when the Zeppelins came over. I know about your father, too, and how he died in India from his wounds and how gallant he was at the Khyber Pass. But, Mother... Yes, dear. You've never, never told me anything about Grandmother Winship. Haven't I? No, and I'd like to know something. Bruce. The child's 16. I think it's time she knew. But, Bruce... And you'd probably feel better to get it off your chest. What, Mother? What is it? Well, my dear, I've never talked about your grandmother because I've always half believed that someday, somehow... She'd come down our garden walk and... Oh, I know it sounds silly. And explain where she's been for the last 20 years. Why? What happened to I her? I don't know, and I don't suppose I ever will. Cynthia, darling, if it's going to upset no, you... No, Bruce, you're quite right. It would be best to... get it off my chest, as you put it. As you know, Alice, I was born and brought up in India... And I was about your age when my father was killed in the Kuiper campaign. Mother decided to leave India for good and return to her old home in Warwickshire. However, since it was necessary for her to go to Paris to attend to some details of my father's estate, she decided we should leave the P&O boat in Marseille and proceed by train. You may imagine the timidity with which we two unescorted ladies traveled across France without the slightest knowledge of the language... And without, indeed, assurance we could find a hotel room in Paris, though we had telegraphed for reservations for Marseille. You see, dear, the great Paris exposition had just opened and the city was jammed with visitors from all over the world. You may imagine our relief when we arrived at the Grand Hotel Universel and heard the clock speak in quite ah, understandable English. Winship. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you will please to sign the register. Uh, uh, you have our reservation. Oh, indeed, yes. Oh, most fortunate, madame, that you telegraphed. Uh, I reserve for you the last room in the house. Oh, I'm so relieved. Yes, Cynthia. You may as well learn now to sign a register for yourself. Oh, yes, mama. Where do I write? There in that line. Oh, yes, I see. Voila. You are uh, fatigued from your journey, no? I shall have the boy show you to your rooms at once. Chasseur! Chasseur! Oui, monsieur. L'appartement 342 pour madame et mademoiselle Winship, tout de suite. <laughs> 
Um, bien, monsieur. Uh, this is your baggage, madame? Yes, these six. Le voilà le bagage. Il n'y a six pièces. Entendu. You, you'd best carry the little one with the medicine in it. Yes, maman. Le petit bois, mademoiselle. Uh, thank you. I'll take that one. Uh, the little red one? Uh, très bien. Uh, this way, ladies. Keep your eye on that tortoise, Cynthia. I don't trust this Frenchman. Oh, Mama. I don't think he'll make off with our things. Oh, here's the lift. Troisième étage. Troisième. Oh, I do wish we could have gone straight on to Southampton. But you'd only have had to come back across the channel to see the solicitor, Mama. We really saved time this way. I suppose, I mean, I wish we hadn't come to Paris at all. Such a sinister place. Oh, Mama. Voilà, le troisième. This way, ladies, to the right. Attendez. C'est bien. 338, 343, 340. Oh, voilà. Entrez, ladies. Thank you. Oh, what a lovely big room. And look, Mama. French windows. Oh, in the park out there. And, and that square with the statue. Uh, the ladies desire. No, thank, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Merci, oh, the, thank you, those ladies. beautiful, beautiful bridges. Oh, Mama, it, it's like something out of a book. Yes, my dear. That's the trouble with Paris. It's so attractive. But underneath, it's evil. Oh, and Mama, the furniture, the gilt clock, and this lovely marble top table. Oh, Mama, everything is so, so French. I'll be very glad to be on my way to where everything's English by this time tomorrow. Come away from that window and help me get into something comfortable. There's a dear. Yes, Mama, of course. I don't know when I've been so tired. I, I just can't seem to catch my... Mama. <laughs> Mama, what's the matter? Mama. Mama, speak to me. Oh, here, I'll get you up into bed. There. Now let me loosen your corset. Here, Mama, here are the smelling salts. Breathe deeply, darling. Mama. The telephone. I've got to get a doctor. A votre service? Uh, hello, operator. Will you please send a doctor up to room number... Uh, let me see. Number 342. Pardon? Qu'est-ce que mademoiselle désire? Will you please send a doctor to room number 342? Je ne comprends pas. Qu'est-ce que mademoiselle désire? A, a doctor, désir? a doctor, please. Ah, oui, a doctor. Oui, mademoiselle, tout de suite. While I waited for the doctor... I did everything I could think of to bring my mother back to consciousness. I massaged her fingers and toes. I put wet cloths on her forehead. I waved the smelling salts under her nose. But she lay silent and white and unmoving, like one dead. Only the quick, shallow movement of her breast assured me she was not. And all the time, another anxiety possessed me. What if this doctor could not speak English? How should I tell him the circumstances of mother's unexpected fainting? How should I understand his instructions for treatment? I'm sure it was not long, although it seemed like an eternity before he arrived, accompanied by the manager of the hotel. And to my great relief, they both spoke English. The doctor felt Mother's pulse, took her temperature and did the usual things that doctors do. And then he turned to the tail-coated hotel manager. La jeune femme parle-t-elle français? Pas un mot. Vous en êtes sûr? Tout à fait. Alors, je peux parler à mon aise. Monsieur, ceci, c'est une affaire très sérieuse. N'ayez pas l'air alarmé lorsque je vous mets au courant. Cette femme est atteinte de la peste. La peste Elle n'a qu'une heure à vivre. Je n'ai pas besoin de vous dire que si ceci se connaît, votre hôtel perdra tous ses clients. Ils m'ont tué par ce mot. While they talked in this language, I couldn't understand. I looked from one face to the other, trying to read from their expressions how serious my mother's illness was. But they were as casual as though they were ordering dinner. And finally, I could stand it no longer. Oh, you must tell me. What is the matter with her? Mademoiselle, your mother is ill. Yes, seriously ill. It is a collapse. You perhaps to this kind of family. However, a week or two of absolute rest, we will work for her. A week? We will go on to England tomorrow. A fiery the horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. Days. The Lone Ranger. Right now she must Ranger. have complete rest. The next 24 hours will be critical. Oh, Mama. 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 Oh, Immediately, I need some medicine. This Will you is the legend of a man and a horse. I must not yes. leave your mother met. for a moment. You'll the story of the Lone hours. Ranger Here, I will and his great horse, Silver. And a little message to my wife. 
to a wife. Yes, yes. I have the medicine already prepared. The Lone home. Ranger and it would be faster were to go there for it than to a pharmacy. The there are very few chemists to have the ingredients. But they had followed his trail you tell for many weeks Alas, until finally I have no they noticed telephone. that the hoof prints of the outlaw's horse a were fresh. A messenger, perhaps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mademoiselle does not know if there is some fat with the exposition of me. Nowhere can last you find time. a reliable messenger. They are all selling uh, no, souvenirs. Oh no, Mademoiselle! You will accomplish the end more happily yourself. Here is the address. Right right way. Way. Toto, he missed me, but he shot my and horse. Get after him. Here is the message to give to my wife. But Toto's horse was tired and no Toto, match in speed for the animal here. Cavendish Road. Sure the, the outlaw escaped. Here will give the, uh, when Toto returned necessary from the chase, instructions to the cavalry, he found the lone ranger will, standing uh, beside his dead uh, horse. A good horse, ready, Toto. Before I loyal, you what was faithful, and brave. I was seated in a little taxi cab outside the hotel with the doctor's message clutched in my hand. Toto. Well, the hotel manager gave no, valuable well, directions well, to the cabin. En plus, vous pisserez un pourbois assez grand pour remplacer ces vieilles bagnoles avec une belle voiture. Allez, on peut pas. 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 Allez, on
But the masked Mr. man was a kind Harris. teacher. He was Just gentle yet firm, and Silver was intelligent. And I was certain the I saw that same seemed to white sense the desires returns. of the Lone Ranger and did his but best to cooperate. He learned statues. quickly, and after but several days of training, he was oh, ready. Please, please, Follow hurry. me, Tuttle. Oh, I'm going after Cavendish. Just beyond the great square, he turned up a narrow street which shot me into the wide circle. No hoofs had ever beat the plains like those thundering hoofs of the great horse Silver. During the past few days, Cavendish had gotten far away, but the masked man and Toto trailed him relentlessly with only a minimum of rest. And then I saw the days to cut down the outlaw's lead. But at long last, Cavendish came to view. There he is. Stop him the wrong hotel. The mighty stallion responded with a new burst of speed. Cavendish fired wild shots over his shoulder until his gun was out. I don't understand what you're saying. Powerful and fast was no match for the charging silver. Fear and panic filled the outlaw's face. He heard the whole thing. Never near the road. Stupid man, go away, My mother is sick. You've taken more than two hours to get the to the doctor's house. Why can't you understand? My mother is sick, perhaps dying. The last of the Cavendish gang was captured to be tried by law and punished for his crimes. I looked around. There were many others whose criminal plans were to be challenged by the Lone Ranger, his faithful and then they Indian companion Toto, and his great horse Silver. Everywhere I looked with foreign faces, strangers, enemies, and then, shouldering through the crowd, I saw a bare-headed young man in tweeds with a pipe clapped in his teeth. And before I had a chance to speak, I knew help had come. Uh, I say, having some trouble. Oh, thank heavens, you're English. Yeah, right you are. Now, what seems to be the matter? I told him as rapidly as I could. And he paid the mulish cabbie. He popped me into another cab. Five minutes later, we walked up into the lobby of the Grand Hotel Universal. The manager was behind the desk. My mother, is she all right? I beg your pardon, mademoiselle. My mother, Mrs. Winship in 342, is she all right? <laughs> there is no uh, Madame Winship in 3242. What? 342 is occupied by Monsieur Auguste Noailles, a permanent guest. But don't you remember me? I- I'm Cynthia Winship. Two hours ago, you put me into a taxi to go to the doctor's house for some medicine for my mother. I am afraid that Mademoiselle is mistaken. I have never seen her before in my life. Well, look here, what, what is this? Well, listen, I swear to you. It's just as I say. We signed the register less than three hours ago. We got in on the train from Marseille. Well, let's have a look at the register. Yes. I'll show you I'm in 342. Where is the register? It is there, mademoiselle. You may see it for yourself. See, today's date. Fourteen guests registered, but I do not see any mademoiselle or madame Winship. Do you? No. What have you done with my mother? Please, what have you done with my mother? I demand that you answer you me this please, minute. I, what have you done with... I should not like to, to ask you to leave. Miss Winship, please. We'll get to the bottom of this. Perhaps mademoiselle is mistaken. Perhaps she is registered at some other hotel. No. This is the hotel. The Grand Universal. You... You were standing there when we arrived. You handed my mother the pen with which she registered. You came to the door with a doctor. You put me in a taxi. But I assure you, mademoiselle, these are fantastic. Wait a minute. Your oh, what is it? Yours, that that cowboy there. He carried our baggage. He'll remember. Uh, garçon. Uh, oui, monsieur. Vous vous souvenez porté les bagages de madame à numéro 3, 4, 2, cet après-midi. No, monsieur. Uh, there were six pieces, don't you remember? You wanted to take them all, and I insisted on carrying a little jewel case. It was a little red one. Oh, no, mademoiselle. C'est la première fois de ma vie que je vois mademoiselle. He says he never saw you in his life before. But this is monstrous. It... It's impossible. My mother is somewhere in this hotel. What have you done with her? What have you done with her? Feeling better now, Miss Winship? A little, thank you. Care for something else? No, thank you. Uh, another cup of tea, perhaps? Certainly. A garçon? Monsieur? Uh, un tasse de thé pour mademoiselle. Tout de suite, monsieur. I don't know how to thank you, Mr... You realize I, I don't even know your name? Oh, it's Bruce. Bruce Stanley. I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Stanley. It's a pleasure, Miss Winship. Mr. Stanley, you believe me, well, don't you? Of course you? I do, Miss We did Winship. register at that hotel. We were in room 342. Well, I can even describe the furnishings. There was a big window that went from the ceiling to the floor. Well, every hotel room in Paris has windows like that, Miss Winship. Oh, they do? Yes. Well, in this room, the draperies were plum-colored, and there was a marble-top table, black marble it was, and a gilt clock it had run down. The hands had stopped, I remember, at 20 minutes past three. Uh, the walls were covered in rose brocade, and 
The bedspread was a washed-out yellow. Oh, if I could only get into that room, you'd see that I'm not making this up. I'm well, not... I'm sure you aren't. Perhaps I can find a way to make them let you in the room. Can you? Yes. Uh, I'm with the embassy, you know, undersecretary sort of thing. I believe the British Empire has enough influence to change the mind of an obstinate Paris innkeeper. Well, then let's do it. Right away. Well, I'm afraid the might of Britain can't move that fast. It's past dinner time. But, but tomorrow we shall see. Tomorrow? But I must get into that room tonight. I... I have no money. No way to sleep. Well, we can do nothing with the people at the hotel. You saw that. We'll just have to be patient until tomorrow. I'm sure I can find a room for you tonight in a pension near the embassy. You're so very kind. How can I ever thank you, Mr. Stanley? Well, you, you might begin by calling me Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Cynthia. Oh. What oh, is it? Oh, I, I just thought of something. The doctor. The doctor? Yes, the one the hotel manager brought in to look after Mother. I still have his address somewhere here in my purse. Yes, here it is. Now, we must go there immediately. He can tell us about Mother. Well, let me see. 24 Bis Rue Val de Gras. Well, that's not far. Just off Boulevard Raspail near the Luxembourg. Well, how long would it take to get there by taxi? Oh, about ten minutes. But it... It took over an hour this afternoon. <laughs> So here we are. Yes, this is the place. Attendez, mon vieux. Uh, très bien, monsieur. The house is dark. Well, it's quite late. Well, I don't care. We've got to find out tonight. Uh, where is he? Well, there at the upstairs window. Uh, monsieur le docteur, cette mademoiselle Winship. Elle veut vous questionner à propos de sa mère. Winship, je ne connais pas mademoiselle Winship. He says he doesn't know you. But he must. He must. It... Doctor, don't you remember this afternoon? You sent me here to your house for medicine for my mother. Je ne comprends pas l'anglais. He says he doesn't understand English. Oh, the liar. The dreadful liar. He does. He speaks perfect English. Et vous, jeune homme, je vous conseille de ne pas déranger le repos des gens comme il faut et de vous en aller avant que je n'appelle la police. Ah, I'm sorry, Cynthia. Oh, Bruce. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? If it hadn't been for Bruce, I'm certain I should have gone out of my mind. He found a room for me at a pension near the embassy, where I spent a sleepless night of anxiety, almost beyond endurance. Bruce called for me at half past ten the next morning and took me back to the hotel. To my surprise, the attitude of the manager had changed completely. But of course, Mademoiselle may inspect room 342. We are only too glad to convince Mademoiselle that her mother is not and never was in the Grand Hotel Universel. Why, I... I, I personally will escort you to the room. This way, please, to the ascenseur. Oh, Bruce, that terrible man. That horrible, Cynthia, horrible... Cynthia, man. don't let him upset you. Monsieur, au troisième. Troisième, monsieur. Now, remember what I told you last night, Bruce. You'll see. Plum-colored draperies, black marble top table, rose walls, and a gilt clock with hands stopped at 20 minutes past three. You'll see. Yes, sir. Voila. Not quite him. This way, please. It was room 342 that you wished to see, mademoiselle? Yes, that's right. Third door to the right. Parfait. You see, Bruce? I know where it is. Yes, my dear. Here we are. Voila. Enter, please. Now, Bruce, you'll see. The yellow bedspread... Oh. Not quite the room you just described in the elevator, mademoiselle. The drapes are royal blue. No. A little dusty, I fear. Uh, I must have this room renovated. You see, there is no marble top table. No. The clock, as you notice, is running. And right on time, it seems. And no. the walls are not rose brocade, but yellow flowered no. wallpaper. Now, my dear mademoiselle, you see how thoroughly mistaken you are. No, no, no! They had tried to make me think I was mad. They succeeded. I remembered nothing until I awoke in my aunt's house in England two weeks later. Thanks to Bruce, who never left my side during those terrible days when my sanity hung in the balance. 
Well, that's the story, Alice. And that's why I've never been able to talk about your grandmother, Winship. Oh, Mother, how horrible. Because all these years I've clung to the foolish hope that somehow she'd come back and tell us herself what happened. You poor dear. You may as well dispel that hope forever, Cynthia. What? Since you've at last brought yourself to discuss your mother's disappearance, I think it's time you knew the true fact. Bruce. Your mother died 20 minutes after you left the hotel on that fool's errand for the doctor. Oh, no. She died of the bubonic plague. She had caught it in India before she sailed. The doctor recognized the symptoms the moment he examined her. He told the hotel manager in French in your presence. They agreed that the matter must be kept completely secret. If the news leaked out that there was a case of plague in Paris, the city would have been emptied of visitors, and the exposition would have been a failure. Oh, Bruce. The conspiracy of silence began in the hotel. The bellboy was paid to claim he never saw you. The taxi driver was paid well to take you to the doctor's house by the most roundabout route. The note to the doctor's wife advised her to detain you as long as she could. The taxi driver added his own imaginative touch by returning you to the Ritz instead of the Universal. I shudder to think what might have happened if I hadn't come through the Place Vendôme just then. But you didn't know? Not then. When did you find out? Next morning. By then, the conspiracy had grown to international proportions. The embassy had been advised. If the exposition was a failure, the franc would fall and the pound sterling would be affected, that sort of thing. You know. I knew when we went back to the hotel, you would not find your plum drapes and rose-colored walls and black marble top table. And you let me go through with it. What could I do? I was acting under orders. I knew that the hotel had completely fumigated and redecorated the room overnight, and everything was in readiness to repudiate your story. I had to let the last act of that dreadful farce play to its dreadful end. What did they do with my mother? Her body was removed from the room less than 30 minutes after you left it. It immediately burned. Why? Why didn't you tell me all this years ago? Why did you let me go on all this time? This, this is the first time you've ever mentioned your mother since then, my dear. Alice? Yes, Mother? There's a new issue of the Tatler in the library. Wouldn't you like to look at it? Mother, I want... Now, dear, there's a good girl. I want to have a talk with your father. Escape, produced by William N. Robeson and directed by Norman MacDonald, has brought you The Vanishing Lady by Alexander Wolcott, freely adapted for radio by Mr. Robeson. The part of Cynthia was played by Joan Banks. Bruce was played by High Everback. The hotel manager and driver by Ramsey Hill. Musical score was conceived by Cy Feuer with Eddie Dunstetter at the console. Next week... You are deathly afraid of snakes... And between you and a fortune, between you and escape, you're on the white jaws of a deadly cotton mouth. Next week, we escape with Irvin S. Cobb's famous story, Snake Doctor. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, we, when we again offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.